<laughs> so welcome to the Business Buzz. Uh, today we have Sarah, Samantha, and Veronica. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. So we have both managers. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then owner operator. Owner. But you like... Less operator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. A healthy Recipe bar. Recipe maker extraordinaire. Sarah right. is. Yeah. For sure. You got to start it. This is got like your. Started. This is your baby. Yep. So we're gonna go back even farther back than just the healthy bar because this building wasn't always the healthy bar. No. So you moved to town and decided, I'm gonna get some old buildings and make them into some really cool spots so that <laughs> I can make this into a place that people really wanna to come to visit for families, yeah. out of town visitors and for yourself. So kind how did that of, even happen? So, so it was more focused on the art. Okay. That was my focus. I came to Kingman and I really wanted to create an art community and I felt like we didn't have that much going on as far as the arts. So what year was, was that? Yeah. 2010. Okay, so cool. Okay. So downtown was still kind of a ghost town. Yeah. Lee Williams hadn't been renovated and that, that wasn't down downtown. Yeah. So real estate was still pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I wasn't really thinking, I, I mean, in 2010, yeah. it was more like- People I was, were just getting out of the 08, 09 yeah. recessionary period. So yeah. there was like kind of yeah. like this fresh start in 2010, right. like what do we do? And, and at that time, I, I was working on a master's degree in painting. Mm -hmm. um, I was pregnant with my fourth child. <laughs> this busy house. <laughs> and, and I just kind of felt like I moved to the desert. Mm -hmm. And there was, I, and I felt like not just, um, you know, weather wise and climate right. wise, but culturally, it yeah. just felt like a desert. Right. And then we actually left Kingman for a couple of years. Oh, okay. Um, in 2012. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to come back and make Kingman our permanent home. There you go. And so I made it. I made a decision before we came back that I'm not going to complain about <laughs> what Kingman doesn't have. You're going to put it there. I am going like cool. I'm going to just whatever I feel like we need. We're going to try to make it happen and not that's worry it. about it. That's awesome. <laughs> Isn't that? That's great. Like just yeah, you can have make a your solution. community what you want. You know, if you have a good idea, there's other people out there that have these good ideas, and sometimes people just need that person that takes a step forward. And it's like, hey, listen, I'll do the investment and the risk. If you all agree with me and help support this and make this work. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I know. I think it takes a little bit of optimism. Yeah. And a little bit of an idealist. Yeah. Yeah. And someone a little bit naive. <laughs> being, willing to, being willing to do it, take the risk. A lot of people just yeah. won't take the risk. And yeah. Kingman definitely needed it. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yes. Well, we need growth. We need yeah. culture. You culture. Need, you need diversity. To, you need to yeah. have culture that's adoptable from people from all walks of life and places because this is such a migrated to place. Yes. Yes. Right. You know, it, it's a very old town, old community, but the majority of the population growth is from people from out of the area. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, and they are usually coming from places that had culture. You were out in Salt Lake area or no? No, I more recent, like the, the yeah. place I was before coming to Kingman. Yeah, before 2010. I was in Maryland. Oh, wow. wow. So I was but in so, Annapolis, but, Maryland, and okay, I was yeah. really involved in the arts there. And mm -hmm. Um, I just felt surrounded by culture oh, sure. and art and, yeah. you know, I lived on a little peninsula yeah. in downtown Annapolis mm -hmm. yeah. and just had, it was very idyllic and green mm -hmm. and there was and yachts. <laughs> 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 it's really, yeah. really and, different. And old really and different. hundreds yes. of years old versus right. just the last, you know, century-ish, yeah. you know, which is kind of something that's interesting about the West is mm -hmm. like it was settled later. And so there is not such deep rooted culture. It was right. very like spur of the moment, like yeah. there's a patch of lands, put a stake in it. All right, mm -hmm. let's make it into whatever we can right now. Right. Versus Maryland had so much industry shipping right. and, and it, that it was able to grow cultures very quickly, but hundreds of years ago and now yeah. it still maintains it. So that you're trying to bring a little bit of that, <laughs> which is a well, good and, concept. And even the architecture, like my husband yeah. was stationed at the Na Naval Academy. Oh, okay. He was, he was um, a, a doctor for the military. Mm -hmm. So just those buildings and oh, yeah. everything there was just like you said so much intention and yeah. thought and and kingman just yeah. kind of feels like the shanty town from the wild yeah. west a little bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep, just yep. Kinda... definitely so yeah. but as an artist you're looking at it as like a blank slate a clean canvas right which is kind of a cool thing too you have that yeah. ability to kind of look Absolutely. at something that most people if they didn't have that creative mindset they might just do what you did and just be like oh it's not here 
complain about it, move away. Right. Complain about it and live in it and just be accepting of it. <laughs> right. Or, you know what, this is like a canvas where I can I can make this my own art. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of like the angle you went. So 2014, you decided to come back, but this time you're gonna invest. Yeah. Mentally, so, physically, and financially. Right. Like, and you're gonna, gonna make it, you stake your own piece of this. Yeah, and I had just, I had finished my MFA and I wanted mm -hmm. a space to have like art classes yeah. and just do a night gallery. I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's such a long story and it's not as related to the juice bar. Um, but I did end up starting a nonprofit arts organization. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, we also purchased, purchased another downtown building, which mm -hmm. is a block away, yeah. which was the old movie theater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's become Beale Street Theater. So that's, that's just, just so cool. kind of taken off. And yeah. um, it's been a long journey, but they're going to finish and yeah. actually the renovation get to Isn't use that cool it? seeing <laughs> yeah. you getting close to that finish Absolutely. line? It was like yeah. such. It was open for when first I moved Friday. To, yeah. It was beautiful I, in yes. there. And people yeah. were really excited about it. Yeah. Nine years ago when I moved to Kingman, I just was like, man, that's such a shell. And I heard that you were trying to do all this stuff. And, right. and Christine was, was involved as much as she could. And I'm like, man, that is such a huge undertaking. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to do it. And like, here we are getting closer and closer yeah. to the we're finish seeing, line. We can see the light yeah, at the end of the tunnel. Yep. And so this space was always intended to be kind of like an, a cultural arts mm -hmm. type building with classes and things like that. And then- There's like four um, units here, is that? Yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. But, and then we, we thought, oh, for the, the plan, we thought, oh, it'd be really neat to have kind of an artsy cafe type mm -hmm. thing because we thought that, you know, food would be a better sell yeah. than, <laughs> than <Really>? art. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something to bring people know. down. And yeah, like, just everybody wants just to go something. eat and drink when they go visit a place in, in a downtown. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. And, and honestly, um, you know, early on in my, I guess, my adult life, um, I had kind of two loves. One was like health and nutrition mm. and one was art. And I, mm. I honestly considered maybe going into a nutrition route and well, you married a doctor. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently you cared about your health. There's no yeah. better way than free health care well, like that. It was like, <laughs> it was like 20 years ago. And I, I set up this little class for all these people to come and learn about healthy eating and all yeah. this stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it was, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> but I realized it was really hard to, to help people make lifestyle choices. Yeah. And I, that right. helped me like choose the art path yeah. instead of the right. nutrition, like coaching path or whatever. That makes sense. Yeah. But I, I, ha I mean, I got, I remember I got my first good blender mm -hmm. in like 18 years ago and my first juicer around that same time. Oh, wow. Okay. So, the um, beginning of the juicing world. Mm -hmm. So I, and you know, I, I learning and, and, mm -hmm. and trying, I, always believed in in whole foods mm -hmm. and and just trying to eat as close to nature as possible right Absolutely. and um plant plant strong like right. yeah um so i don't i don't feel like it's absolutely necessary to be a purist right um i you know I, but i definitely go through periods where i'm completely vegan 100 mm -hmm. plant-based and i always feel way better <laughs> so. um, i know busy lifestyles mobility convenience where you are and what's available near you you know it makes it much more difficult now it'd be one thing if there was a healthy bar on every corner like dunkin donuts are in maryland area you know where they're so convenient and they're so accessible making healthy choices would be a lot easier right but like we're just not in a world like that unfortunately so you know that i agree with you I'm the same exact way like yeah. if, if it's yeah. there and available it, you make that choice but right. when it's not and you're, you're just like stuck between choices it's like this one's worse than that one that one's worse than this one like uh, but yeah, yeah. well i'm just trying to be the best choice yeah right. like well, making sure that we I, are yeah. i feel kind of spoiled because i'm like oh i can just go to the healthy bar i know and get if, if i fall off the bandwagon i can just eat at the healthy park and yeah, back on track. Yeah. I can go get load up juices. on some yeah. juices Because it's a lot of work, going. physical work. And that's one thing that I give you guys the hats off to what it goes just to make one thing is you, you really almost can't have like this type of thing in your own just house. You couldn't really have four or five different juices and smoothies that you want to do and be doing two, three, you know, salads and dressings like it has to be like, and it's so much work and it's so hard to, cause it's fresh. Right. So like you're, you're literally fighting against the clock from the moment, you know, the fruit or the vegetables sliced 
and getting it into hands and getting it consumed. So like talk about when you were first thinking about the business model itself of creating a healthy option and you were already thinking of the different items that you wanted to have, like how did the logistics start to wind themselves into it or has it literally been a learning process since you opened it's been and you're a, still tuning yeah, in? Yeah, it's been a learning curve yeah. and I'm not, um, I don't come from a business background. I don't, I mean, I'm, I come from an education background mm -hmm. and an art background. You know, I, I taught public school for a while. So like, to be in a business setting is yeah. way different for me. In a food setting. In a food setting. There's some businesses <laughs> yeah. are fairly easy. Retail sits on the it sits on the the floor for a couple of weeks. You're not worried mm -hmm. about it dying right. and right. not and not being able to sell it anymore. Right. You know, a t-shirt yeah. lasts for a long time until right. so it goes out yeah. of style. So this is a this is yeah, a it, very it's happening. So so you know one. we jumped into a difficult market, a difficult yeah um, situation as far as like you know a difficult sell in a place yeah. like Kingman like yeah. hey come yeah. eat some healthy food yep and and having a high standard um absolutely we mm. really wanted to make sure that everything was real that wasn't refined was fresh yeah and whole food so we don't have any processed anything right. like everything is pretty much from scratch yep. made in house yeah yes. so it's super labor intensive yeah. which these ladies could tell you all about yeah, this, is where, yeah. <laughs> right. this is where you stepped in so you both had some form of passion for healthy foods absolutely yes. because that's what attracted you to want to work here right and i know that you i don't know much about your backstory but i know that you were i don't know if you still are driving quite a distance from like that the southern market yeah Okay, so yeah. you still are doing that. So, it, but it was worth it to you because it really was. Well, absolutely. This was like hitting not just like a great job and career and opportunity, but it was aligning with kind of your ethical, you know, mindset. Absolutely. Of like what you're selling is you want it to be good for people. Yeah. So and talk about that exploration when you were looking for a job and you came across and how did that go? Well, I think that for me too, like I've been in the hospitality and the service industry for a long mm -hmm. time. So I'm like love being in service for mm -hmm. people. Like I truly do love people. And so a lot of my passion comes from like really wanting to see people every day, talk to people every day. Um, the industry that I was in before, that we were in before, we would serve things that were not healthy. Yeah. You know, it could be like hamburgers, french fries, yeah. you know, beer, th th soda mm -hmm. pops, things like that. We're like, I and Veronica also just loved being in service of people. Yeah. But like we just really like I especially just really wanted to make this change into mm -hmm. serving something healthy. Yes. Yeah. And it like it like fed people, like fed their life and made them feel vibrant. And then when they come in, they're just like, oh, this space is so clean, it's so well lit, it's yeah. so beautiful. And you know, everyone when we come in, they can feel that like when we say made with love, like we're oh, not yeah. joking. Like the music is always going, people mm -hmm. us girls are happy, we're singing, we're we're cutting up that whole fresh food like every day. Like yeah. our soups, everything is from scratch. And so yeah. um, the driving, the distance, that didn't matter to me. Yeah. I was like totally willing to go into town and do the extra. To you gotta have... be proud of what you do. Yeah. And it's sometimes hard to when you're uh, when you're an employee and you're in a different you're in a different space like for her she can as an entrepreneur and as an owner you can kind of decide exactly what you're going to do and then make sure that you can put your stamp on it in your mind and this, that's your choice as employees you have to try to find someone that you can align with so you can actually have that pride in it and it is hard to find a job that you can be proud of because it's we're in a really weird world where a lot of the retail and a lot of the fast food fast casual slow casual even fine dining <laughs> They, sometimes their ethical things just don't align with your own, but you right. need a job, you need to make money. So it's nice to be able to find that. And you right. actually found something you could connect with on, an, on not just a financial motive, but an actual real, like you feel good about yourself when you go home because you just gave people a bunch of really great stuff Absolutely. that's gonna be good for them. Yeah, and I know like it took me a while of really, like I was gonna take my time and really seek it out. And mm. I know that like, when I first made the phone call in with Sarah, I could almost tell immediately that like we were going to be in alignment. She was like, yeah. no, just you're so close. Like, just come in. That's interview. I just mm -hmm. happened to be there, which is like there is no just happened to be anywhere. Right. Like it yeah. was meant to be right time, right place. And yeah. we just connected right away, like did the tour. Yeah. I thought like, yeah, we could do this. Absolutely. Yeah. Take it from where it is into something that's operationally running really smoothly mm -hmm. and operationally running really, really well so that when we start getting like busier and busier and busier, we're ready. Yeah. Just hit the ground running. Like right. we are just ready for it. And you went through one of the hardest phases of downtown and when, you yeah. survived. Yes. You know, and a lot of people were close to not surviving it sounded like because it was just, everything was shut down and people were conflicted on if they're going to walk one way or the other. 
Um, so you got through that kind of hard part, and now here's we're on uh, the other end of it. It's you're starting to see more people walking in immediately Absolutely. for when they start opening up like yep. the other blocks. Oh, so yes. that's a that's a great thing. Yeah, and Veronica, she comes kind of from a similar background, but mm -hmm. she's like been cooking and making food and the just been yeah. on this like from scratch ever since she was a little girl. Yeah, yeah. And well, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Uh, your... Go off of what she was saying. Like I've been in the service industry and stuff, and it's nice serving people, but it's nice yeah. to be like. I made this. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I made this. Yeah. And you're enjoying it. So yeah. that's and it's pretty good for you. exciting and it feels really good. <laughs> yeah, so. for sure. Did yeah. you guys know each other before you yes. started working? Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, so you were like a referral, like, hey, I know somebody else that's got mm -hmm. a similar mindset. They'll do great here. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yes. we had a great team. And I just knew, like, man, if I could pull Veronica in with yeah. her attitude, like, she just comes in, gets it done. Create these pillars, the, the foundation does, of this place. Yeah, and, like, truly does love, like, I made that. Like, yeah. our hands, like, it's, like, all the girls. Like, um, yeah. Veronica does a lot of the juicing and mm -hmm. a lot of the prep. And, I mean, we all do. But it's just, it's a good feeling to yeah. be able to. And it's nice yeah. to see, honestly, like, because it's great to have the younger generations coming in here and learning skills. Yes. But they're, they're <laughs> like, on a stepping point now. Right. And they're like, oh, now we got to go to college go back to school so like you'll get that turnover that's unintentional they're happy with what yeah. they're doing but you guys are like that foundation is here all the time ready to yeah. take on the next batch of newbies and yeah. train yeah. them and, get and them we've going taught the right them track. basic life skills yeah. that they can yes. take on with them Absolutely, like yeah. you would be surprised that like they've never cut an onion. Any an, an oh, yeah. onion yeah. 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 or a tomato <laughs> before right. so oh, yeah. right. you peel it and chop it and they're like you know, the peeler's sitting there and you can tell they're not really sure what tool they're picking up first. <laughs> you're right. like, you're like, uh, you don't cook it all, huh? <laughs> yeah, so, but that's great. Because then it's like literally bringing like these young men and women into like a basic, like she said, a life skill. It, it's super. I remember home ec and it was a big, I don't know if they still do it in schools. Yeah. But, it, you know, you know, I'm kind of dating myself a little bit, I guess. But it was, I remember having to stitch things right. in middle school. Mm -hmm. Like I had to learn how to use a sewing machine, whether I wanted to or not. I had to learn how to cook things and yes. operate a stove and know how to turn it on and off. And how, what is the boiling temperature? What happens if you mix this right. on top of boiling that? It would, you know, what, what if there's a stove fire? Like, I feel like a lot of those kind of basics are just slowly getting cut out of different budgets federally. And then states so look at the same thing. They're like, well, we instead of teaching them that, we just need to teach them this one core thing because we can't get funding for these other things. And so, you're kind of taking it almost upon yourself to be like, well, an employer can also be an educator. Yeah. Absolutely. And teach these life skills that they need. So take, let's just do that. Yeah. Instead of you requiring them to know how to do certain things and you as you're hiring, right. you're being like, hey, it's okay if you don't know how to chop an onion or use a knife, we're gonna teach you how to do it, which right. is really cool. Yeah. What's your attitude? What's your, how are you with yeah. people? Because yeah. all that, you know, that people stuff like, yeah, mm -hmm. that just, just, we have the greatest people that come in here. Yeah. You know, we draw in really good people. We have a really great staff right now. And like you said, it's just like, I don't mind if they don't know how to cut an onion. But like, do they have like people? Are they kind? Yeah, are right. they generous? You know, how are they yeah. gonna fit in here? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I love the environment. Like, yeah. um, it just, like she said, we attract a, just awesome customers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the best people ever. Mm -hmm. Because yep. I think, I think when you are aware of what you put into your body, it kind of like elevates mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and yeah. puts you on a higher level of right. of just life experience and. Yeah. And so we have such great people that come in and yeah. they appreciate it so much, yes. especially people traveling. Oh, for yep. sure. Yes. Um, they yes. come in and they're like, oh, They're finally. so thankful. And Oasis, yeah. so and thankful Oasis for this. in the desert. Yeah, yeah I mean, it really truly is. Yeah. Not just for Kingman. Because they're not used to the, yeah. all the processed food that oh, we yeah, eat. So right. this is more aligned with them. Yes. So that's awesome. <laughs> Something really surprising for people here that, don't, that aren't very traveled or don't pay attention to what goes on outside of their little yeah. bubble, mm -hmm. you know, like to, to hear things like, you know, the the U.S. breads are not considered breads in uh, European oh, countries. countries because yes. they don't they don't qualify due to the chemicals and the process. You know the, the whole processing thing. Right. Um, I think that's pretty crazy. Yeah. And yeah. it's nice to see that. And I think that that European culture is slowly trickling into the U.S. and we're starting to get that healthy lifestyle. The so higher standards. Hopefully that's what you guys are seeing on the front lines is you're getting more domestic Kingmanites. You're getting people from Bullhead are coming up. You got people from the surrounding area that are starting to make this a conscious decision on a regular basis. I think and we are. growing that loyalty yeah, of I that. Mean, we are for sure. Well, we someone definitely... who like was a child kind of growing up in Kingman too. It's mm -hmm. just awesome to see a place like this, yeah. which I never thought a place like this would come to Kingman, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. And, so. and you hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. So when it comes to challenges of being in your guys' position and yours, we'll start with you. What was the most challenging part of this business model for you? Well, was it 
you know, uh, obviously it's not attracting people to work. Yeah, it sounds like that you have that's not a problem, but it was right. it. So inflation is probably the top topic right. currently in the news, yeah. right? Yeah, cost, mm. co cost, cost of goods changing and fluctuating. How has goods, that been for you? Cost it? of um, labor, like all of it is high. Mm -hmm. So our margins are really slim mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just a tough, a tough industry in general. Yeah. And, and we've seen several restaurants going out of business. Yeah. One healthy one just recently that yeah. just made me so sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's sad. Yeah, it's and sad. so, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a, a constant, like you kind of got to be on your toes all yeah. the time and, and thinking about the future, like what can we do? What can we offer? How can we Creative market? Creative ways just, to do yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And, and keep our standards, you know, and, and mm -hmm. still offer something healthy and um, how can we better serve the community mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So it's, it's challenging. Yeah. Have you taken have you taken inspiration from places that you visited and been to that were healthy choice type of restaurants and you're like okay what are they doing what are they doing <laughs> right. You know, like, right yeah we always. try to Get we try to yeah, look always. at other things and yeah. try to see how other people are doing it right and, and you know we have a unique and a unique spot here yeah. and and it's um, there's some awesome opportunities where mm -hmm. we're downtown yeah and we're kind of isolated on Route 66 you know we're like um, not surrounded by a lot of other cities and, right. and things like that. So, so it's, um, there's unique challenges and opportunities yeah. here. Yeah. But one thing that I think you've dodged, which is a nice thing, is you've dodged your landlord raising your rent. <laughs> Unless you, I don't know. Well, right, I know. We, 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 yeah, we probably I've would, heard of that happening yeah. you know, pretty frequently in the last couple, about three years since COVID hit, right mm -hmm. after people felt like COVID was under control enough where the, the world could get back to normal, the landlord started to get very aggressive at like, how much can we squeeze this? And mm -hmm. just the yeah. rentals of just residential and commercial well, have increased predatory. like 40%. I, yeah. I feel like um, because residential rate, yeah. well, yeah. like That started first, that, that, it's that triggered. Put everything that, that inflated the real estate market. Yep. And, and I don't think that, um, at least here, the commercial sector has mm -hmm. not increased the same as yeah. rate as the residential, but I feel like landlords feel like, they oh, they it. see all these yeah. rents going up everywhere yeah. and they, they've been pushing it up and it's pushed some of the people out of like even downtown. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, yep. Mm -hmm. we've been seeing that. Um, I, yeah, we probably would not have survived if we had a landlord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we were trying to rent, we, right. we would have probably Honestly. closed down yeah. during the There's a recent closure down, um, uh, did you know about Legacy Signs? They just closed. Mm. Um, um, and he'd been there for a long time. Every neon that you're seeing was him. Oh, no. And uh, unfortunately, a rental increase of 300% uh, was too <gasps> much. That's not even fair. It would be too yeah. much for anybody. Yep. But, mm. you know, things happen and, and stuff. And, and it's just like you said earlier, sometimes just things happen for a reason. Correct. And another opportunity will open up. I mean, he was skilled awesome product and right. service so he will make he will come out on, on a winning side but it is unfortunate that that's happening so i'm glad that you didn't have to deal with that because you right. were smart back in 14 right. you're like "Ooh, it's it's not overly priced right now i'm gonna buy it even if i can't do anything really with it right now <laughs> yeah you know yeah. i'm gonna have it as an opportunity right. later and you did not know that they were gonna invest all this money and making this beautiful mm -hmm. downtown right. you took the risk and you got the rewards later yeah. out and later down the road yeah and we're still we're still like slowly building up the the property we've had we had to do some pretty extensive oh, yeah, renovations right. and build out and uh -huh. we're still we're still working on yeah some of that so cool. it, it's but i you know a long-term goal right. it's i i feel really um excited about oh, yeah. being in this spot oh, and having sure. some space yeah, and yeah. and continuing to grow and yeah we and I love to. how a lot of the stuff that you are doing from all of your different projects are very like community and family yes. focused. Mm -hmm. So like that's a big complaint in most communities. Oh, there's nothing for our kids to do. Or there's nothing. Da, da, da. Everything that you're doing is aligning with anybody who's 100 years old down to two years old. Right. Like, you're trying to create this environment that you can bring your kids to. You know, yes. and some of the yeah. stuff that you've talked about with your other buildings, it's very <laughs> oriented around that, which is yes. awesome. And the more there is down here, the more that it will attract more people. I think this first Friday that we just had was it seemed to be the most busy I've ever seen yeah. one uh, and it was big. So that right. was a concern it was like, uh oh, when we stretch it out, it's going to get it's just pulling the same amount of people and spreading them out. It actually seemed no, like it filled up so many people and it was very hot, but it cooled off just enough at sunset 
that like that it was it was awesome. The people yeah. were out yep. enjoying the spaces. It was and, like, so fun. And yeah. we, so fun. we've had a first Fridays here, and we've kind of felt like we were on like, the end yeah. Of, yeah, yeah, like, come on down. Oh, hey guys, yeah, some yeah. This way. Yeah, and, no, this and is it awesome. was still yeah. like a lot more packed, maybe on other ends of yeah. the, the street, but we it was still the mm -hmm. most traffic that we've gotten on a first Friday. So yeah. we so hope it continues to yeah. It was our busiest first Friday yeah. that yeah. we've had. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it was great. It was awesome. It was awesome. And they just, you know, like you were talking about it with being like so geared towards families now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had like a fun balloon, water balloon and toss type event <laughs> down this way that was really fun. Uh, yeah, and they yeah. had roller skating. Yep. We had um, buskering bands. Yep. We had a bounce Bouncy house across houses. the street. Yep. And like, just to like, honestly, like it was really fun, but we wanted like, really hit the kids with healthy can be so good yeah like we have some exactly. of the like into like just have all these little ones coming in mm -hmm. and wanting like our like our fresh pressed juices or yes. asking for our smoothies i'm like yeah. oh my gosh yes because like going back to impacting the younger generations and just teaching them that healthy is not yucky it's right. absolutely delicious we all grew up in a time when unfortunately we didn't like vegetables when we were kids right? yeah <laughs> so they, and they, but they didn't have we, they weren't fresh pressing juices when right. i was growing up yeah. and smoothies and like there it was none of that you yeah. know so uh, we didn't really have the choice, but now kids do have the choice. Yeah, and we're just yeah. really creating this like safe mm -hmm. space for them to come in and yeah. yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. when it comes to menu, so the most recent addition I would say was the garden salad in the ranch. Yeah. Yes. So and I know that I don't think there's been really any big changes that have happened yet. That's probably the biggest change was mm -hmm. trying to create a vegan ranch, which I know is like not easy to do. And I have to say it's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, the first iteration was good and I know you changed it a little bit more, but then yeah. the second iteration was great. Um, yeah. So everybody in a creative mindset is always thinking of like, what's the next thing, mm -hmm. uh, which I know is really hard for you to like, you know, turn it down because <laughs> yeah. you don't want to spread yourself too thin. <laughs> I know, I'm kind of like, oh, da da da, -da. Yeah, but yeah. it is hard for me to kind of rein things yeah. in a little bit. But, but there's gotta be something that you're thinking maybe is something you might do at some point that- We definitely want to make than... like a detox yep. um, yeah. box for people of juices oh, cool. that yeah. we make and stuff and sell for people so they can just kind of take that little package yeah. and, you know, have a day of cleansing they, or, yeah. I mean, a week of cleansing if that's what a they week want. Or yeah. A day. Yeah. There'll like be juices that, that we're still don't trying to work out for. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and we've been working out the details on that. We've got some really fun stuff that she's been making and trying mm -hmm. out that can just be go right into that detox box. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So that's something in the works. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And a new garden salad with a vegan dressing. Mm -hmm. And then um, so what are some things that you think that people don't that have never been here that they don't know about you? I don't actually think that people truly understand how deep our um, like passion for the whole foods and mm. that we're vegan mm. and that we literally we're probably the cleanest as far as ingredients. I mean, possibly in Mojave County, not just Cayman, because yeah. we scour through ingredients. So they're vegan, gluten free, mm -hmm. sugar free. And I mean, what else? It's all that. Yeah, stuff. it's just yeah. refined. We've refined. No, no refined. None. Yeah. 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 Just the fact that it's literally probably the cleanest place that you can eat. We yeah. have a lot of people that come in and they're like, we didn't know that you were, you know, this or that. No yeah. dairy. Oh, does this no dairy? Right. We can't have dairy. Oh, I don't even worry that. about it being in the store. I yeah. didn't know that in the very beginning. I, uh, when I very, before we even worked together and you had just opened, I always thought that the broccoli cheddar was mm -hmm. cheddar. Mm -hmm. I thought that the chili had some type of meat in it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just didn't know. Uh, <laughs> yep. and, and it was in a reminded me of a place that so I went vegan like uh, gosh it was a while ago five years ago and there was a place in Vegas called Veggie Nation uh -huh. and it was like the first time I'd been to a place that was a vegan restaurant and nothing on the menu said vegan the term vegan or mm -hmm. plant-based the, plant, mm -hmm. the term plant-based wasn't really being thrown around right. as much back then and it literally just said buffalo chicken wings oh it said but it was, it, everything literally was exactly that you would like the way you'd yeah. see it with no other hint but i knew it was called veggie nation and it was supposed to be this vegan place so i had to ask the server yeah. i was like so it says like buffalo chicken with ranch i was like is this his own dairy vegan wing you know right? yeah. Like, yeah yeah i'm like okay cool so but it was uh it was eye-opening for me back then uh to eat something that was good that still hit like those those markers that right. you have from being someone who had eaten everything else that you could possibly eat throughout your right. whole life. Cause I was so worried about it because I think that's one of the worry people have when they're 
think of healthy eating is they think like, well, what am I going to lose out on? Mm. What cravings am I going to miss? Mm -hmm. To me, it was buffalo chicken, right? It was right. like that buffalo type of, and the ranch was so critical because it was like my favorite dipping sauce. Right. <laughs> right. All of a sudden it's like, okay, wow, that was good. And then, wow, this was good. And then macaroni and cheese with like cashew cheese, yep. things like that, where it was like, there's how can they make that same taste? And, and you yeah. start to like reprogram the way you think of it as it's just taste and texture. like. It's mm -hmm. just, you just gotta tell yourself, you understand that when you start eating things, you hit all of those little like cravings yeah. mm -hmm. with like your, like your chili, like things like that, where it's like, it's just a, it's, I think that would be like a myth that people have. Is yeah, yeah Sarah's they done think a great gonna miss out. job at disguising it as, <laughs> yeah, you know, absolutely. like I mean, not I disguising never, it, but making it taste yeah, exactly. Yeah, I never right. intended to do like meat substitutes or anything right. like that. Um, I wanted to just keep it whole food and simple, not yeah. put like, strange things like yep. like impossible burger or something right. in our menu you know. mm -hmm. that's what i did so, in the very beginning so well, i was I so think worried it's a that good that I was transition miss. but yeah. like for this i i mean for me it um and for this this healthy bar it it's more like it's just i want it to be real like yeah. more more yeah. important than being being get being right. like like yep. right. i just want it to be real and, yeah. and keep it simple like yeah the soup recipes, they're just simple. They're all real foods, yeah. all mm -hmm. whole ingredients. Yeah. They're not trying to just add, you know, this or that mm -hmm. substitutes, you know? Right, right, I feel right. like people not knowing that it's vegan also gives us a chance for those people who would, if they knew it was a vegan right. place, would kind of be like, oh, I'm not even gonna try it. Right. And skip like it. we yeah. surprise people, yep. they didn't, they don't even expect it, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we always tell this funny story about a guy who would come in every broccoli cheese every day, every Monday, he would come mm. in and come in and then finally we wrote vegan broccoli cheese and he was just appalled. Like, <laughs> how dare we change this That's recipe? Awesome. And we just ended up explaining it to him like, well, like, Jokes on you, it's always been vegan, you know. Mm. It's well, always we been the we just, we just we didn't never change usually it. say vegan. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. And so he and he still comes in, still gets his broccoli cheddar every every Monday or whatever. But yeah, yeah it was just funny. He yeah. had no idea. That is. And, and mm -hmm. sometimes that's what you gotta do. It's like it's like the blindfolding taste test mm -hmm. stuff. Sometimes people's mm -hmm. own like mind will convince them something is exactly. different. Exactly, it changes something. You so. know, and so yeah. Well, in the soups in general, like if you get any soup from other places, they're usually so full of like starches and oh, fillers yeah, yeah. Yep. and like not real stuff. And it's yeah. so easy. Their vegetables are so delicious. It's so mm -hmm. easy yeah. to make a good base for yeah. a soup with just your basic like right. carrots and celery and onions. And, yep. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's but not I that think, hard. You know, I think it goes back to it that you'd make everything here and you have prep. You know, mm -hmm. I remember like forever ago when I had my first restaurant job, other than McDonald's in high school, mm -hmm. I had a fast casual restaurant. It's called Ruby Tuesdays mm -hmm. that most people recognize. Mm -hmm. so this is in 2000 and like uh, 2002. And they at that time was a one of the fastest growing fast casuals. So they were competing with Applebee's and Chili's mm -hmm. and they made so much stuff in house like the potato skins, the mashed potatoes, oh, wow. like they, everything was baked. They had multiple prep cooks, so it would come in hours before the restaurant, start baking baked potatoes, and then cut them, slice them, mashed potatoes for this, potato salad for the salad bar, the pasta salads mm -hmm. were all made. Everything was made, and I left that two and a half years later and went back to eat there about six months after that, and I was like, something's off on the penne pasta salad, something's off on this. Mm. So I started asking the server, and. and some servers don't know how anything's made in the kitchen, unfortunately, which you've probably seen that if yeah. you're a back of the house person. It's like the front of the house, like, hello, you, yeah, you guys, you should, you should probably know <laughs> how this stuff is made. People are going to mm -hmm. ask you questions. And they were like, oh, no, that all comes in bags now. Mm. And I'm like, it comes in a bag. They're like, yeah, the pasta salad is just a bag. And they just scoop it out and put it in the thing. I'm like, well, it tastes like crap. Now. Of course it does. You know, and you and they did it to cost save mm -hmm. and they cost their customers. And now they're bankrupt yeah. right? because trying to find the shortcut in the cheap way and the only will last in the short term right. mm -hmm. because you lose your real dedicated committed people the person did not leave because there was no cheese in the no. soup no, he still is a committed loyal customer because it's good yeah. you know so i think that that's a that's a really cool thing that you guys do i know and like i had the i never had the uh the energy bites and I had some oh. the other day yeah. and I got some. So delicious. Holy cow. Yes. <laughs> and they're so filling. I can eat those all the time. Yeah, the, oh, hikers, scary. the hikers, those people they come oh, in and man. they're just so dense and they're so good they for you. Are. And just our gym bros just love them. They they're just so good for you. They literally satisfy like the Snickers people. Like, cause I'm a Snickers person. <laughs> 
they'll they just like satisfy that craving. So if I'm craving something horribly bad for me, like yes. I'm like I'm gonna go get an energy Absolutely. bite and like have that because like this right. is good for the me. The almond joys like, were born me. out of it being my favorite candy bar. Yes, <laughs> just going me too. Overboard. That's what I got. Overboard on the almond joys, and I'm like, yes. oh my god, I'm gonna find this recipe. And now it's so just like good. these delicious cacao and like the yeah. vegan chocolate chips and Crazy you know, good. and we blend up the almonds here for it. I mean, like when oh we say we're whole gosh. foods, like we're not messing around with that at all. Yeah. Like that's a real thing. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever thought of like doing that, like selling like almond milk and like getting down that road of package yeah yeah, yeah because it's, we even make our own almond milk, yeah. I mean, our almond right? milk yeah we make we don't even <laughs> bring it almond milk people. it's just almonds and water and so, so i literally have absolutely. coconut milk and almond milk that's the only two non-dairy things yeah. that i have in my house mm -hmm. but like it's still just not as good as making it yourself because yeah. i know they put other crap multiple in it. ingredients yeah. um, i mean you read the yeah. ingredients on that and there's multiple we literally it's just water and yep. almonds and love yeah. So, <laughs> right. The most important ingredient. Yeah. Right. So we just sprinkle that right yeah, in there. Yeah. So that's yeah. That'd be a cool another I think idea. And then when you start doing the dressings, which is really nice, because like I'll try to sometimes get a couple salads yeah. for a couple of days. But then if I don't have time to get here, if I have a backup salad dressing, it's like sweet. I can at least make something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was so popular. That's we started that's another good that idea too. Selling yeah. quick. Yeah. Our corn salsa. People want us to always sell oh, that yeah. too. They're like, can we have some of that corn salsa? Yeah. So we started selling that. It's you so know, good. it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So anything you could think of that you would want to let people know about what you're doing here? Um, in Kingman, we're on Beale Street, yeah. open six days a week? Yep. Yeah. Close one day, okay. Yep. Yep. Um, but you're open in. also really early, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're open at seven. Yeah, so people who are that morning, instead of grabbing a coffee, they can grab a juice Absolutely. Every day. Absolutely, yeah. So and we do really fresh cool. pressed juices every single day. There's somebody usually yeah. juicing every single day that we're open. So You it's can order just, online through yep. the website, mm -hmm. so that's yep. cool too. Loyalty program, I remember. Yeah, we have yeah. a great loyalty program. Deliver it's through awesome. Uber Eats and, mm -hmm. um, and yep. cool. there you go. DoorDash and yep. yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. So, yeah. And I know that a lot of your staff is heading to college in the fall. Mm -hmm. So are you guys in hiring mode right now or do you already have people that you're kind of set? We, we are pretty set. We're having yeah. these girls because they're so amazing, like yeah. train the new bees that are coming in. Like oh, we that's a good want idea. the, yeah, before these girls leave, we have like new, a good, yeah, go, people perfect. coming in. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to be caught off guard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. No, yeah. Yeah. And these, some of these girls have been here since. Day one. For day one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would like to yeah. say that too, that I would just like, um, the girls that are here, some of them that are leaving, the healthy bar would not be what it is without them. Like they yeah. just made this place, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, we yeah. appreciate it. It's a woman owned and women ran business, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah, and every time I come in here, they're always very nice and pleasant. Of course, yeah. Before they knew who I was. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> they were yeah. still nice to I was you. just a customer in the beginning. <laughs> they, they were still very nice and everything was awesome as usual. Yeah. So I've never had a bad experience with anything. We're which really, is unusual to say about a restaurant, yeah. honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and we're really making this like what they're calling, you know, like a new term that people are saying is a third space because it's not work oh, and it's not home. But fun. we're really looking for like this that. to be people's like third space. Yeah, like somewhere yeah. they can go in the in-between just right. to get out of the heat, like yeah. come read a book, use the Wi-Fi. We yeah, have I've Wi-Fi kids. Sitting, I've, yeah, we have Wi-Fi. Just yeah. come, like it's a little cafe. You know, we yeah. have the Puggins, the outlets all over. Yep. Just come. It's a safe place for kids to come and yeah. have a smoothie before they go down to school or and after school. And it's not school. too hot. You have a nice patio area with tea. Out here Beautiful, too, and the great. downtown with it being refinished, we're yeah. going to be, you know, new flower pots and all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh yeah, cool, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you thought about doing any of that? I know that's kind of a hassle of growing your own. We have vegetables. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so um, you asked about level. like anything in the works. Yeah. And, and it's it, I couldn't say there's any promises, but right. like my heart's desire would to move it toward more farm to table. That'd be cool. Yep. And mm -hmm. absolutely, you know, yeah. have a healthy bar that's more like a self-serve because oh, yeah. um, okay. one of the challenges with trying to eat more local, mm -hmm. more um, grow your own type farm to table is it's unpredictable. You can't yeah. just have the same menu, the same prices right. all the time. You're kind of, it's kind of like the catch of the day. Yeah. Eat whatever you can harvest that day yep. and, and put out. Yep. And that would be my dream to make it more like that yeah. so that it's more sustainable, more local, yeah. mm -hmm. that cool. kind of thing. And, but you know, it just takes time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we'll, we'll that, but that's our goal is to move toward that. That's and good. even to use some of the, the space because I have, a, um, you know, more than just the one corner right. I have, 
I have some space in the back and a little planter. So we might, you know, yeah. we might try to grow a few things yeah, that, yeah. that we use. I mean, even if we even just, just grew some our herbs. parsley or yeah. our mint or yeah, exactly. our rosemary, just yeah, herbs, yeah just like things like that. It's yeah. still just like it's you know self-sustaining for the environment. We're not right. getting it from somewhere else where it's being trucked in or yeah. grown. I mean, just little things like that, and it's more cost efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there was a pl there was a pizza place in Portland, Maine that was called Flatbread, mm -hmm. and you walk in. They have their normal menu, but then they have this big map of like, like a 20 mile radius of Portland with little indicators of every farm oh, and neat. like certain things they'll bring in from certain farms. They'll indicate on that map and chalk. So yeah. it's like, oh, what's your special say? Oh, well, we have this from this farm. We're using this particular cheese that comes from this dairy farm. It's like, it's really, it, it makes you feel more connected to mm -hmm. your like, your area. Yes. And we, is, we're lucky that we are able to source things like locally as far as like from at least Arizona on yeah. a lot of like our lettuce, a yeah. lot of our citruses, a lot of that stuff gets yeah. able to come right from here. Yeah. We do have a really long, beautiful, especially down like in the Yuma area, yeah. like growing season. And oh, so a lot sure. of our stuff, at the very least, if it can't be right here in Mojave County, um, we're getting it right from yeah. at least Arizona. And then um, a lot of stuff like Rosebird Farms, yeah. we can partner with them yeah. sometimes and get some They always say food. try to always eat as close as you can, yeah. you know, as, as much as you can, you know. <clears throat> yeah. This is better for you for a bunch of different reasons. Yeah. It's like the whole eggs thing, you know, like eggs don't need to be refrigerated, but everybody's just so used to it because it's got to sit at the grocery for so store long. for a month, you know, and so mm -hmm. they just refrigerate it. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah, for sure. And, yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining me. <laughs> thank you, Steve. And thank you. Uh, thank maybe you. we'll do another one when you're yep. ready to yep. launch the, the farm. Yeah. The hydroponic <laughs> yeah. farm in the back of the store. Yeah. <laughs> right. We, do, be cool. we had the wheatgrass like that for a while. Yeah. yeah. We, um, I have. We have, we, we're, lots of things in the works. There we go, I knew it. <laughs> we're yep. trying, we're trying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So just takes a little bit of organization. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes the creative mind is <laughs> yeah. a little yeah. bit less well, and, you and your foundation you're, you have now, yeah. you know, yeah. sometimes yeah. like that it's people that make the business, you know, right. and so like, if you don't have the right footing, you can't go starting right. something else or right. this one's going to fall off. Right. right. So you got a good footing right now. So cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you.